Let's hope that's what they are. Right? Um, again, I want to thank uh, PAC for uh, ex uh, in extending the invitation uh, to me to come out and speak on a few things. Um, I'm not running for any office, but I am, uh, I guess, ha oh, I didn't know if that was a cue for anything. But I'm, I'm happy that I was um, able to, uh, or they felt that I was able to come and contribute to this event. Um, just want to speak on a few things. Uh, this past weekend, I had a, the uh, opportunity to participate in another forum in NIAC um, called uh, Organizing for Democracy. And uh, they also gave me the opportunity to speak on a few things. So some of the messages I'll say today are quite uh, are along the same lines. We are living in a county uh, where I think we have a lot of uh, things going on. And we're in a place now where we really need to pay attention to uh, some of the things that have been going on. Some of these things that uh, we are finding out now are things that have happened for a long time or have had to have been at least positioning themselves for a long time and now they're revealing uh, or their, their ugly head is now being revealed. But let me say this, one of the concerns I have uh, for this county uh, is that our county still needs to strive and we need to strive for a, uh, a creative, innovative, diverse coalition. I think we need to create a coalition of people who are diverse in, 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 in their thoughts, diverse in their perspective, all right? I think we need to create a coalition across racial, economic, and social lines. Uh, I think that as much as, a, as we love this county, I think sometimes this county, the, some things get overlooked. I think we get, uh, or sometimes we overlook really how segregated this county is. And I don't just mean racially, but we live in a county that is extremely segregated. We live in a county where people can go about their whole day without interacting with anyone outside of their comfort zone. And if we're gonna create political change, and if you wanna be part of political change in this county, one of the things we have to do a better job of doing is establishing and creating a coalition uh, of diverse peoples. We need to do that along racial lines, we need to do that along economic lines, we definitely need to do that along social lines. Uh, we definitely need to create these uh, 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 coalitions of diversity. We also, as I made mention last Saturday, we must do a better job of making sure we're not preaching to the choir. We have to make sure we do a better job of not preaching to the choir. Um, as I stated th this past weekend, you know, when we have these events like this, we pretty much have a good idea of who's going to come out. We pretty much have a good idea of what we need to say to gain a sense of applause, to gain a sense of acceptance in a crowd like this. And a lot of times events like this end up being feel-good sessions and not really creating any type of change. Uh, we feel good about the meeting, we feel good about the form, and it lasts for a couple of hours and then we're right back where we started. So we need to create situations and, and we need to create situations where we go out and we try to speak to those who may not necessarily find themselves in forums like this. We meet, we, and I'm, I'm happy that there is a forum here today in Spring Valley and that is good because I think over the years uh, you know, the NAACP has been consistent in having forms in the Kerr Center, but I think for a lot of campaigns, especially as we look at county and, and state positions and, and district, like a lot of times I felt Spring Valley has been left out unless it had to do specifically with Spring Valley politics. And I'm happy that this forum is here, but I want to encourage uh, the organizers, HPAC, and those who are politically engaged and those who uh, have a, a political uh, stake in this county to really engage yourselves here in Spring Valley in the town of Ramapo. We have a lot of issues going on in this county. Yeah. A lot of issues and we all know specifically when we talk about the town of Ramapo, we know that we're in crisis in the town of Ramapo. We know that when we look at the uh, school district of East Ramapo, there's a crisis in East Ramapo Central School District. All right, and it would really be 
uh, a great thing if the county, if people from all over the county could unite and to help the people of the town of Ramapo and the students of East Ramapo to let these uh, the town and the students know that they have support from people that even come beyond uh, their local borders. Yeah. So we must do more to you know make sure we're not preaching to the choirs. We must go out to the areas where people who, who have been pushed on the margins of society, whether that be racially, economically, socially, we must do more things to ensure that they feel engaged in the political process. We cannot make, we can no longer afford to make assumptions about why voter apathy exists. What we must be concerned about is solving the issues of voter apathy. A lot of these uh, uh, residents here are dealing with issues that many of us may not deal with, all right? You have folks in the county, we do have folks in Rockland County who must figure out whether they need to take their medicine or eat on a daily basis. We have people in Spring Valley who are figuring out where they're going to rest their head on a daily basis. We have people in Spring Valley who are dealing with drug abuse and, and sexual abuse and alcohol abuse on a daily basis. And we have to figure out how can we make those folks, how can we engage those folks, and how can we ensure that those folks also feel like they have a voice and they are relevant in the political system. So I hope you understand what I'm saying here today. I'm saying we can't get, I don't know whose phone this is, but it's going off if we can. So I don't know, but my, my point is that we have to go beyond the status quo. That we have to begin to redefine what organizers look like, what political organizers look like, what constituencies look like, what political, uh, uh, political um, what's the supporters look like. We have to try to transform that. Because if we are trying to transform the county, you're not going to be able to transform the county if you maintain the same uh, techniques and the same methods that we've been going through for these last few years. Also, one of the things I want to say about organizers, those who may not be running for office but are organizers, I consider myself an organizer, that when we interact with different communities, we must really be serious about creating a platform. And we must be really focal about creating a platform. I think the community needs to come together through organizers, organizations, really have dialogue with members of the community and figure out how we can create a platform that the community supports and that the community also had input in. That when the community hears the platform of a candidate or candidates, you know, some of the skepticism lies in how much did the community partake in constructing that platform. One of the ways that candidates can kind of ensure that that doesn't become a, 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 a skepticism about their campaign is how about we engage the community and engage them in the creation of a platform. Make the community invested in the, in the platform that you as a candidate are going to campaign. Uh, I teach government in, in, in the college and they talk about different types of representation. There's trustee representation and then there's delegate representation. Delegate representation says that you go to the community, you find out what the community wants and you take that back and you speak as on behalf of the community. Trustee representation says that you know, you have been entrusted to represent the community, so oftentimes you rely on your own thoughts and you believe that you're speaking on behalf of the community, right? I think that both of those things have their advantages and disadvantages, but what I believe we need to do more of is taking the delegate approach. Finding out what it is, what are the issues that the community are saying, what are the issues the community is talking about, and making that part of the platform. I believe HAPAC is a great example of self-determination within the Haitian community to say that they are going to really try to get involved in the electoral process. I think it's a, a job well done, I think it's a, a, a self-reliant, a self-determined state. And it's, a, it's an effort to ensure that they have a, a place at the table and a voice. And I hope that others will be uh, uh, committed to following their lead. And lastly, let me say this. To those who are not running for office, those who are just here uh, to hear, to listen, to find out what platforms are, uh, I want you to pay attention to who is here and who isn't here. You need to pay attention to who is here and who isn't here and hold that elected official accountable. 
those who are here, those who aren't here. This county needs a shift. We need a shift from doing things from the old status quo to, in my opinion, we need to create a radical, progressive, <coughs> honest coalition. And when you look at politics, sometimes terms like radical can be um, scary, right? But all radical means is it just needs to be a revolution. If you know what a revolution is, right? Like a record, a revolution, a change, a turn. We need to have a revolution of politics, a change in the status quo, a change in how things are done. And on a local level, it's easier to get those things done than it is on a federal level. So for all my radical progressives out there, and I say hello because I consider myself one, it is at this level I think that we can be most effective and have our most immediate impact on a local level. Things where the federal occasion won't be, the federal, uh, uh, I like that, thank you. How the federal government and national politics may not take our heat, but on a local level, we can really attempt to do some things and create some change. So I wanna encourage us to continue to move forward. Let's move from being status quo to progressive. Thank you for your time, and let's all listen and hold these elected officials accountable. Thank you. Yeah.